Alright, I'm gonna try and be quick with the complicated feelings I have on this game. But they boil down to, it's janky as hell, but the plot is at least worth it. It's got that early 3D PC RPG thing going on, where the combat is a weird mix of click action and random number generation. It also has this weird rhythm thing, different attack styles on top of which sword you use. There's also a lot of silly stuff, like how you need to both level up herb gathering and read books on herb gathering to gather herbs at all. But the biggest problem is chapter 2. You can fuck yourself into not being able to turn in quests several ways, and it's essentially comprised of entirely running around a map that's a little too big. I deadass installed a mod to make Geralt run faster, and it was still a grueling fucking pain. But after that, it improves significantly. Chapter 4 is my favorite. It has this Shakespeare-esque tragedy that you tag a kid along for and try to teach him morality with. The ending also hit me with a really incredible twist that made struggling through Chapter 2 pretty worth it. It's good if you can survive jank, bugs, and kind of bad voice acting, but it's like Vampire the Masquerade or Mountain Blade. That's part of the charm. Plus, choices do actually matter, which is nice. This game is just a massive improvement on every aspect of the first game except maybe the writing, which was already really solid. The graphics are miles better, the music fucks pretty hard, the voice actors took some classes, and the biggest improvement is the combat. They scrapped the combat of the first one for a bigger action focus. You hit things with your sword and dodge out of the way of attacks. The story has got a lot of really good choices. For instance, there are three chapters in this game, and which chapter 2 you play depends on a choice you make in chapter 1, which is cool as shit. I feel like it's paced better than the first one too. I put about as many hours into it as the first one, but it felt way shorter. And also it kind of feels like a 30 hour prologue to Witcher 3. I played to the end of this one and damn I wanted to jump into the third one. But the game does absolutely hold up on its own and definitely worth playing. I was not aware video games could be this good. I was under the impression that it was illegal or something. Witcher 3 improved upon Witcher 2 as much as 2 improved upon 1, which I didn't think was possible. The biggest upgrade in this game is the writing which was one of the strongest suits of the first two. At the end of the tutorial, there was a moment I said, this is the best a Witcher game has ever gotten. And looking back, that seems incredibly quaint. It's a game I've been playing off and on for months, and it's never felt like it's spinning its wheels even like a hundred hours later. The pacing is impeccable. Every time I give this game just an hour, it blows me away. It takes place in a land torn by war that you can never see but can always feel. People are sad and broken, losing loved ones to the war, genocide, or just bandits and monsters that come to feed on the scraps of the countryside. The characters around it are what really give it life. In which one, you'd complete a task, tell someone about it, and they give you information, then you do another task. In which are three, you complete a task, return, find the guy who completed the task for sitting in the garden, and then you listen to his heartbreaking musings on how the garden was his wife's life. And, while the story is still the strongest aspect of Witcher game, this game has a lot going for it in every other area. It's got a ton of side stuff that's just play Monster Hunter for a little bit, i.e. track down a monster, then have a fun boss fight. The game is beautiful to look at, for a very realism bound game with a pitch black story, it's got one hell of a color palette. The potion crafting system took the opposite route from Witcher 1 and is now just the least annoying potion crafting system in any game. And if I were to give one complaint, some of the character traits do go from absolutely useless to fucking ridiculous, but in the blinding light of everything else, this tiny little dark patch is hardly noticeable. If you haven't played this game, you've probably heard everyone saying it's fantastic. Believe the hype, it really is just that good. This game looks like the game that I have wanted all my life, as I am a huge slut for good sci-fi. And if they do the thing that they've done with the rest of the games, and knock this one up a notch from Witcher 3, it might end up being my favorite video game. Of course, it's hard to tell that much about a game before it's out. But that 40 minute trailer had better world building, pacing, and was more engaging than a lot of cyberpunk movies. Most times I'll, you know, skip around in a gameplay trailer, but this one I keep coming back to just to watch the whole thing. It's like a really good pilot episode of a TV show, like I'm excited for E3 on the off chance that we get another one of those. CD Projekt Red ain't let us down so far, so I feel safe in being hype. Hell yeah, let's go! Wow, Hearts of Stone was really good, but I think it's time that I moved on to Blood and Wine. Because, because I finished Hearts of Stone and that's like the next thing that you, let's look at the quests. Oh right, the main quest. 
maybe I should actually fin- So here I am in beautiful Tucson fighting Dark Souls. Now here's the thing about Dark Souls that these guys obviously don't remember. You just always gotta be rolling and he'll die eventually. You don't mean to hunt the beast, I hope. I wonder where this The Beast is going to fall on my The Beast list, which goes number 4, The Beast from Path of Exile, number 3, The Beast from Maggie and the Ferocious Beast, number 2, The Beast from Over the Garden Wall, and number 1, The Beast from What We Do in the Shadows. Selling Belgard to either of you is out of the question. Seems to me there's a simple solution to your problem. You guys should just bang it out. Well, Happy, this is your fault. Mine? You're deranged, woman. Based on your actions, I'm surprised you haven't already. What is your rate? Let's jack this shit up. Yeah, it's good. That sounds fair. I could sell this man one apple for like 20 bucks and sure he'd be like, Yeah, you know, that sounds sure. about right. Yeah! Oh man, I love me some music! Oh, this is great! Yes! Yeah! <laughs> I love music! Yeah! A giant among lovers. Okay, yeah, uh huh. A poking, puncturing swordsman. And All right, yeah, sure. That, an unrifled fiddler of harps and other organs. I, I see, yes. Penis, I'm familiar. It's Someone stolen the students. penis. Well, why is obvious, but Somebody how? Stole the sole monument made using a cast of the great Reginald's own genitals. Certified and authenticated. Ah, the villain made off with the most authentic penis ever. This is like the porn version of 1960s Batman. Now, how could I say no to that? Some days, life puts a door in front of you that you know you're going to have fun breaking down. You seem well informed, Hughes. Maybe you know who stole Reginald's testicles. Yeah, the music in this game is pretty good, gotta say. Now I know why that girl was going crazy. It's really them. I hope this modest reward nonetheless contains the extent of my gratitude. Pro tip in life. Find and someone who's excited about your bits as this guy is about these. Me to suggest where to cooperate? Yeah, now that you guys banging it out idea is not only viable, but state sponsored. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I do believe he's right. Perhaps it is time to bury the hatchet. Yeah, and he can bury his hatchet inside your- You... Saw you at the inn. Well, 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 well. If it isn't fancy meeting what the cat finally decided to show up. First and yeah. foremost, we must oh, remain man, calm. Cool as hell. Let's do another one. Yeah. All right. Damien, Here we go. Order the yeah. and search okay, all right, all right. Another one, another one. By yeah. no means can we right, disrupt right, the festivities. Right. One, Panic will only incite the yeah. beast to strike soon. Oh my god, I killed that frog! Let's find a unicorn's horn, a golden fish, and a phoenix egg. With these in hand, they can deduce where the hair, Milton, hides. Mean we need to find those things too. We've no other option, but time is of the essence. But won't so that ruin Easter for us. all of the children? Perhaps an apple will work, or some sweets. We would not be in this predicament, dear sister. Were you still a virgin? Well, you know that. Do you really wish to have this conversation again? It's okay, horsey. I'm a virgin. You believe me, right? <laughs> wow, damn, how'd it know? Ill repute brings me a gift. Right. Okay. Hey, give me that. Yeah. <clears throat> Why, you bomb stretch? He's ruined the game! Yep, now I'm gonna steal this boat. Have a happy Easter, you guys! You know, it's weird, I've been getting into a lot of World of Darkness stuff recently. I mean, you know, you know Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 was announced, I'm finally DMing the Vampire the Masquerade's game I wanted to DM forever, and also this CD Projekt Red Hunter the Reckoning game is pretty good. Hey guys, check this out, I'm a bow and arrow lady, look at this! Boom! Ah, okay, I'm done. <laughs> nah, never mind. This is actually really sweet. Hey, hey, Johnny. Hey, Johnny, watch. Boom, you're dead. Boom, you're dead. Timmy. Boom, you're dead. <laughs> huh. Reads like a furry transformation fic. So, uh, do you, uh, do you have any, like, any hobbies? Okay. So the new wife went this way. Oh, our guess. Yep, there it is. There's the other one. Now we're playing Witcher 1. Here we go. I... Hmm. Okay. S 
Okay, so this is a lot of bar guests. Uh, I don't know where they came from. Oh man, I'm gonna need to switch a group style to deal with these boys. And this seems like an unreasonable amount of bar guests. One evening when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came a to her gate seeking banquet. alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Ooh, I get to renovate a house. That's gonna be fun. Let's see what the people renovating have to say. A bushel of creeps is more a burden than that steel of yours. Oh. The same wine, wine, and look like smuggling wine. It's I, enough to I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, you know, just, I mean. I, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh. Well, how about you? How do you feel about stuff? Oh, life. Yeah, that seems to be the general sentiment. Well, okay, how about you? Yeah, that's me!